Hey everyone, I'm here today to bring you a review of a hairdo wig. This is Bombshell Blonde in the color Glazed Cinnamon. I'm going to read you the color code from the tag. It is R3025S+. And on the tag they also say it's a medium red slash ginger. So we'll talk a little bit about this color. Ooh, I got a little glare. Hopefully you saw it. In addition to all the details about the wig. So stick around because I'm going to cover this wig. I'm going to cover this color. I'm going to show you this color outside. I'm going to show you the out of the box. What did this wig look like out of the box before even shaking her out? Because I think that's important as you're learning on this wig journey. And... I think that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> before I get started though, I would like to thank Wig Studio One for sending me this beautiful bombshell bob to review for you guys. Wig Studio One is a wonderful retailer, um, the first place I ever purchased a wig actually, and they actually they have a wonderful Facebook group. So if you're not familiar with their Facebook group, it is called Wig Fit Wig Studio One Wig and Topper Support Group, and there are thousands and thousands and growing all the time women who share their wig journey. They answer questions. They share pictures of wigs. Really a great place to get support from your fellow wig sisters. So I highly recommend uh, checking it out if you're on Facebook. All right, so let's get started. Before I talk too much about the piece, I would like to show you what Bombshell Bob looks like on all sides. Just check out the beautiful barrel curls. And the fact that they're not uniform, which I think gives it a realism. And the movement, so good. Fabulous movement. So the fibers on Bombshell Bob are heat friendly, so you can take heat to this. We'll talk a little bit about why I think that is a really good thing in this particular piece. But something about these heat friendly wigs, um, the fibers feel really amazing. They're very silky feeling. And it gives them this realistic feel and movement that you just have to feel to believe. Um, heat friendly can also be challenging. I would say though, this is the right length this or shorter for a heat friendly wig because it doesn't touch your clothing and clothing rubbing on heat friendly fibers it, it's the friction that causes them to fray and frizz and so I think you'll get quite a bit more life out of this one all right now let's talk about the color because I know some of you are here only for the color because when your color I've said this in my videos on my own channel colors are one of the hardest aspects of the wig journey because there's so many variables to color and so you might be here just because you're curious about this color so let me tell you about the color codes I have my phone out I do have a color index on my website which is heywigsister.com and it really helps because I've broken down the color codes for you guys and I've talked a little bit about what the letters mean so let's break this one down we've got R3025 so a 30 is a light auburn and a 25 is a golden blonde. And if you look at this close enough, you can see some variation in color on this piece, some darker and some lighter. The golden blonde, the 25, is pulling very red on this. So this is definitely a ginger, a red ginger, medium red. It, it pulls more red than bl brown than anything else. It's very red. It's just beautiful. And let's talk about the S plus. So I don't have the specific S plus to hairdo, but I do for Raquel Welch. And I know that hairdo is manufactured by Hair You Wear, which is the same manufacturer that manufactures Raquel Welch. So you'll see some similarities. This color in the Raquel Welch version is very similar. So I feel confident saying that S plus because I have it on here for Raquel Welch, means multi-dimensional blend that reflects the latest coloring, blah, 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 especially uh, blended, you can read that on my website, specially blended in front and crown with highlights and lowlights that complement the basic color. So that's what you're seeing here, some highlights, some lowlights, 
very tastefully done and just they appear to be versions of the darker and lighter versions of the same color so that's what you get with glazed cinnamon uh, like I said I'll get outside for you so you can see this in outside light but I have a lot of light on me so I believe this pulls pretty true for indoor light all right let's talk about the hair it is like I said heat friendly really really beautiful one thing that I think is is really significant about this though is the way that the curls fall and this is why I think this being a heat friendly piece can be really helpful I as I've been wearing her a little bit trying to get her to tame because she hangs very heavy in the face at first this is much tamed from when I first got her when I first put her on I really didn't know how I was gonna review this without doing something to her and I will not modify a wig prior to a review. I won't put product in a wig prior to a review. I will put water on a wig. I'll scrunch a wig and if you've watched any of my videos you know that I show the out of the box and then normally I will hang a, a wig upside down. I might brush it. I wouldn't brush these curls or comb it. Um, I'm, I will sometimes put water on to scrunch up the curls to try to wake up the curls. The only thing I will ever do to a wig is put water on it. I will not modify. I really wondered if I was going to be able to show this without though because it was really, really, really heavy up here. It still is, but this is much better. So I think uh, maybe taking a curling iron or some heat to it to tame this to the side a little bit might be helpful. There aren't very many reviews of this piece online. I did see two. They didn't talk about this in particular, but I could see how heavy it hung on both of them. So I know that this is common. The other thing I noticed is some of the curls over here, it almost looks like they fell out already, um, which, you know, if you've got bio hair, you know that happens. You can't get uniform curls. I probably would just take a curling iron and try to pop a couple of curls into these straighter pieces here just to pick those up a little bit. Other than that, though, I think that there's so much you can do. Um, one of the things that I did at first to try to tame this is I just clipped this to the side with a little claw clip and then I kind of pulled the hair over it just because it's a basic cap wig which I will show you the cap doesn't mean that you can't clip these over to the side all that means is you can't really pull it up because there's no lace front there but you can clip it over to the side let's since I mentioned the basic cap let's just take a look at the cap really quickly here so there you go you've got a basic cap you've got open ear tabs they're adjustable and they have a lot of hair sewn into them no extended nape, Velcro adjusters. This cap runs big. It's very big head friendly. I honestly think a large cap, a large uh, head size probably can fit this wig. I have it cinched in quite a bit. I think I could cinch it in even more and I'm 22 inches. I am pretty petite over the top of my head, but I have so much extra cap in this, so much extra cap, and it has a good amount of stretch so I just have to believe that a large average large for sure but even a large circumference could fit this I, I really think so if you're a petite you're gonna swim in this cap without question you're gonna swim in it you're gonna have to modify it you can cut wefts out you can sew wefts together but I think you're gonna be really overwhelmed by the cap size I think the ear tabs will probably cover your ears I mean I just definitely think um, this is a, a runs large the ear tabs come all the way down to my ear I would find sunglasses and glasses to be tough to wear with this now certainly you can you could tuck them under but for long periods of time I would say they'd probably pinch um, other than that, I mean, the cap is super comfortable. The hair moves just beautifully. Uh, like I said, the only complaint I really have about it is the fact that it really hangs in the face. But you got to learn how to deal with these things, my sisters. You just have to because if you want to have some choices. So this is fixable. It is, like I said, basic cap. There's no monofilament. You can't really see the permatease. There's just a minimal amount of permatease. This does not have much permatees in it. Enough crimpy fibers to hide the, the wefting, but it definitely isn't poofy. I can feel cap. I don't feel any pillowy permatees except for right. It's not even pillowy. A tiny bit of permatees right here on the crown to give it just a little bit of lift at the crown. And I just poked my eye with the fibers. Um, but it is definitely low poof. So if you don't like poofy, 
this is low poof. If you like poofy though, and you want to get volume out of this, you're going to struggle. There's not the permatease to give it to you. The curls give you nice, beautiful volume here though, for sure. It's just, it doesn't have it on the top. So it's, you know, when I think about the name Bombshell Bob, it definitely has that bombshell sort of Marilyn Monroe date night feel to it. It really does. I would never wear this to work because it would hang in my eyes and drive me crazy without clipping it. Um, but I definitely think this would be pretty date night hair. All right, guys, I'm going to get outside for you so you can see this color outside, and then I'll tack the out of the box on to the end. Thanks for watching. Check out Wig Studio One. Check out my YouTube channel, Hey Wig Sister. Check out my website and connect with me online. I would love to talk with you. If you have questions or just want to commiserate about the challenges of the wig wearing experience, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, we are outside with glazed cinnamon it's very bright out here there's a lot of snow which is making it very bright but we'll do our best and get in front of the gray background Give you a couple of different backgrounds here, just so you can really see the color. It's hard to show color on video. Please keep that in mind. That's why you should watch lots of videos. All right, hopefully this was helpful and you got a good look at the color. Thank you so much for watching. All right, we are here to do the out of the box and I still even have the tag on her and everything. So let's see what we got here. Okay, this is definitely classic box hair. Look at how flat, flat, a little poofier. The curls are smushed. This is absolutely classic box hair. I've done nothing. I haven't shaken her out, nothing. Okay, so you get a wig like this and you're like, great. What am I going to do? Do I keep it? Do I return it? Um, it's, I don't have an answer for you. I don't, you know, it's, it's personal experience. I'm going to take the tag off right now. Personal experience, personal preference. Um, you know, how confident are you that you're going to be able to work with this piece and get rid of the box hair and have her look the way you want to look. It's one of the reasons why I'm going to start doing more and more videos of um, working with a wig so that you can make it your own because it is super difficult and unless you're confident in your wig skills you're not going to be able to make that decision you're going to end up returning a lot of wigs so first thing you do when you get a wig out of a box is you shake it I like to stick my fingers through the wefting and just give it lots of good shakes you can take it by the tag at the nape or just by the nape and you can give it some really good tosses like that uh, for wigs this length, for curly wigs, all of this is great. It becomes trickier if you have a super long wig because doing all of this kind of shaking could cause it to tangle a lot. I don't tend to wear longer wigs, so I recommend until you're good with wigs, start with a bit of a shorter style, even just like above shoulder length uh, because they're going to be a little more forgiving. All right, let's see what we got now that I shook her out some. Okay, we're starting to see something happen. She's starting to get some life in her. The curls are poofing up. Definitely starting to be better. You know, you wanna get in here at the cap, wake up those fibers. This wig has not very much permatease in it. None on the sides. I can feel all the way to cap. Just a tiny bit up here. 
and that's because she is a basic cap wig. So, I mean, we're starting to see something happen. So that is great. I'm very pleased so far that she is starting to get a little bit of body and poof. One of the things, you have no idea how long this wig has been living in a box. So it could be in a box for years. I'm just looking for my comb. So you're gonna have to work with that. You know, another good thing to do is to turn the wig upside down and just to gently comb. Now, I'm not combing through because I wanna be careful with these curls, but just to gently comb to get some of that lift. So we're going the opposite direction of the fibers. Cause I just wanna make sure I can get them all woken up. And then I'm just gonna go kind of around it and lift it up from the cap. Wigs with a lot of permatease can uh, have a lot further to go in waking up that permatease. A wig like this really doesn't have much permatease. So she's not gonna have a lot to wake up. Now I'm looking right at the cap where I said the permatease was. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of this. Just at the cap, I'm just trying to wake it up. All right, I have a feeling I'm gonna need to comb these curls out a little bit because they're just a little stringy. I do think I'm gonna need to separate them. Better and better all the time. Now I've told you in the past that I don't like to comb curly wigs. And as a rule, I don't. Now it depends on the, on the curls and whether or not I think they're too formed, they need to be separated some. So that's where I just, experience is gonna help you. Another thing that sometimes I do is I'll gently comb through the curls and then I'll spray and I'll scrunch and see because I don't, in a wig like this, I don't think these curls are meant to be super fully formed, but I kind of want to see what they're capable of and water will always help that. So just look in a little bit at how it's looking. See, so much better. Oh my gosh, you guys, so much better. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, spray her with water just from a water bottle, spray her kind of all around up here. I'm not going to get her like dripping wet, but wet enough. And then I'm going to scrunch her and then I'm going to lay hang her upside down just so that those fibers can continue to wake up and lift off the cap. All right, here I go.